The cat's out of the bag. We're producing a 148 scale brand new tool seeking. And here's Chris and Luke to show you more. Over the last few years, uh, we at Airfix have been working on a new 1 to 48 scale uh, kit of the Seeking. Um, this is uh, a few years after we've done a 70 second scale a little while ago, uh, but it felt a good time to bring out its bigger brother. Um, uh, it's been a wonderful project to work on, a real privilege, uh, and it, what a fantastic subject to get to um, delve really deep into all the nitty gritty details and, and create uh, what I hope you all agree will be uh, one of the most complete and uh, like stunning kits of this particular aircraft. So we're at Chard, uh, historic helicopters, uh, surrounded by helicopters and uh, horses as it were. Um, and the project uh, is probably one of my first ever projects that I have seen through from concept through to completion. Uh, so that's the Westland Seeking in 148. It's been probably one of my favourite projects ever. It's something to really get your teeth into in terms of detail. I'm sure the modelers will appreciate that. When we started talking about doing a 48 scale Seeking, we thought that it would be a nice easy one because we've already done the 70 second scale. Like we've got all the research, how hard can it be? Uh, but as we started to get into it and realized the extra amount of detail that we can add, soon found that our, our research needed some more work on it. And thankfully uh, with our researcher, Luke, he, um, he really put the hours in and, and did so much time uh, and conversations and research to ensure we got it spot on. So it's been a long project, uh, much longer than I think we'd expected at the beginning, but um, I'm really glad that we put that time in. Uh, it's something that I mean, I'm very proud of. We have made sure that every little nook and cranny of this thing, all the aerials, uh, all the internal details are as accurate as we can do in the scale. So the research is really interesting for Seeking uh, because uh, there's a lot of living memory around the aircraft. So uh, historic helicopters is testament to that. Uh, where you have a group of engineers working day in, day out to um, keep them airworthy and uh, you know keep them in lovely shape as you see them now. Uh, I really hope uh, when our customers and, and you guys get hold of these kits, I, I hope you'll be impressed with what we've done. Um, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed putting them together. They're a little bit fiddly, but you can't help it when you've got so many aerials and, and uh, stuff going on. Uh, but I really hope you enjoy uh, modelling them and painting them up and I'm so excited personally to get to see what you guys do with it. Um, see uh, what layouts you do, what, how you weather them and uh, you know, it's, it's a hard working aircraft and I'm excited to see uh, these final creations and, and the artistry that you put into the work. So uh, that's my privilege, and, but I hope you enjoy doing it. <laughs> we're sort of, we've known for a little while that this is what we were hoping to do with the launch of the Sea King, of our Sea King product. Um, and I've been so excited. Uh, it's been like um, a little boy again, waiting for the opportunity to, to come back here now that we've designed uh, this kit and we've got the plastic and we've got them built up. Um, don't, it's, don't often get to do this with the stuff that we're working on. So uh, I'm incredibly excited to get to be here today uh, and hold it up against the real thing and see where it's come from when we came here for research. Uh, all the hours and months that we put into cadding it and engineering it through to be back here again uh, holding it next to the real thing is, is so exciting and such a privilege. Well, I hope the announcement's taken people by surprise, unless something's happened between filming and release date. It's something that has been really hard to keep a secret, uh, especially with me. Um, you know, you want to shout it from the rooftop that you've been working on this project, but you can't when you make it a surprise announcement. Um, and also it is an added level of risk from a researcher's point of view because you have to ask people for information and then trust them that they're not going to go shout it from the rooftops on things like Brit Modeler. Um, so as I say, I hope it's taken them by, by surprise and, and that they're happy about it. I think uh, Model is generally like the Seeking as a subject. I mean, there's plenty of detail to go into. It's a scratch builder's dream, I know that. Um, you know, the, the level of detail is outstanding. Trying to cater for various versions um, has led to a, a few things on the model that uh, mean that it's not uh, perfect for one type, uh, but we give you all the tools you need to, to make sure it is for the aircraft you want. And it's, you know, personally, my favorite thing about it is the 666, the schemes that it's followed, all four schemes. 
um, being of one aircraft, something really different, something we, we've not done in a while um, or ever, as far as I, I'm aware, to follow its life. Uh, there's not many aircraft where you can do that. Um, you know, there's not many aircraft that have been upgraded so many times. Uh, you know, a Spitfire, for example, you only get one mark, whereas um, XV666 has been multiple marks across its life, and I think that's a really nice thing to show. So, I've got the, the first scheme from the boxing in my hand now. Um, it's not much use telling you XV666 because all four schemes in the, in the boxing are that serial. They follow the life of one airframe. And this is how it all started, really. Um, so, this aircraft entered service uh, in 1970 and uh, it went straight to Farnborough pretty much uh, for the air show there. So there's some lovely photos that we based the scheme off. And we were really keen to show the first iteration of the Sea King. It's nice to be able to show first and last, which we have. And this sort of Admiralty blue that you, you see on the scheme is really distinctive for early Sea Kings. Uh, you know, one feature particularly not of the scheme so much, but the model is this very clean, hole-shaped part um, that's subsequently got a bit cluttered with various aerials. And also the lack of a, a FOD guard or a filter box on the top. Um, so the air intakes are quite, um, it gives it a very different appearance to the rest of the schemes. Uh, being able to show this early version is quite difficult means you have to cater for a lot of different uh, aerial fits, uh, which hopefully we did. Um, it, it is a really lovely uh, scheme generally. So this is the B scheme, uh, again XV666, Damien. Uh, as a HU5 slash HES5. Um, so we believe it had started to be converted to a HU5 when the photo for what this scheme is based on was taken. Um, so, in the instructions we've told the modeler to build the internal fit of a HES-5 because there's no way to be sure what it was carrying at the time. Um, but it did carry a, what we started to call the, the uh, SAR step, this small step where my finger is now, um, which is quite indicative of a HU-5. Uh, but to give the modeler the ability to do HES-5 stuff, uh, we put it in the instructions. So uh, this also displays a folded rotor blades. Uh, which is a feature of the kit that's lovely. You know, we've been lucky enough today to see uh, the HR3 that I'm sitting in today fold its rotor blades. It's quite quite something to see. Um, obviously, the tail folds manually, just to allow for uh, storage on the ship to give more space uh, when operating at sea. Uh, you'll see on the boxings that there's a real difference in colours uh, amongst. The, the scheme, so starting with the blue and then going to the grey, and on subsequent ones, adding a dash of colour. Uh, you know, some people might say grey aircraft generally are boring. Um, I think they're lovely and a, a weatherer's dream, really. Um, so, so this is quite an interesting scheme just because of the uncertainty around it um, about when the photo was taken. Uh, and we didn't have many details to go off, but yes, it's lovely and so it really shows off the folded rotor blades quite well. So uh, this is the third scheme, the C scheme as we call it, showing a HU-5. So this is what uh, a lot of people would have seen over the seas at uh, near Cold Rose and, and various other um, Royal Naval Air Stations. Um, this is the, the typical scheme it would have worn when it was conducting search and rescue operations. This uh, sort of high vis visibility red with the uh, bright yellow rotor blade being a distinctive feature. Again, showing the, the folded blade feature that's included within the kit. Um, you know, growing up, this, this was the one that I would have seen the most. Um, and it's another sort of story, or part of the story of XV666, Damien, um, and its life. So this scheme was based off a photo when it appeared at RF Fairford in the early 90s. So we were keen to show that uh, the aerial fit, um, although there are a couple HU5s within the kit, uh, they did change, you know, it was a constantly evolving aircraft. That's why it was so versatile. They were able to bolt lots of things on. So doing this earlier uh, radio and aerial fit shows the progression. Uh, and you'll see on the D scheme, it's a very similar scheme. Um, so giving that differentiation was, was a good thing to do. So this is the D scheme, the final scheme in the boxing. And something really quite different, a civil scheme 
So not something we normally do, um, especially on military types, because quite often they don't serve in uh, civilian use. And the Sea King, sea King currently does, in fact, uh, down at Portland, uh, the old HMS Osprey. And it's used by Heli Operations, who uh, were kind enough to let us walk around 666 during its um, maintenance and, and get lots of photos for the development of the kit. Uh, very similar to the sea scheme, uh, but with some uh, bit of, a bit of flair added by Heli Operations, uh, which is very nice, and their lovely logo on there as well. Uh, so this is used to train uh, German search and rescue crews who still operate the type, and um, subsequently uh, some other nationalities as well. Uh, so Heli Operations have been a great support during the kit, and we felt it important to uh, thank them by including their scheme in the kit uh, and it's it's nice to then show the, the journey of 666 for its life from first to potentially last hopefully it has a long life ahead of it but uh, it's an aging airframe at this point uh, so yes it's, it's lovely and you're probably thinking why one aircraft why, why did we do that and that's because the possibility arose really in that uh, there's not many aircraft that have served for so long uh, and you know when we realized there was one still going from one of the original production batches we thought wow wouldn't it be fantastic uh, to really illustrate the changes the Sea King's been going through um, via one airframe uh, which just makes it more impressive they're still going and you know although you might call it trigger's broom at this point um, you know, it's it, the, the base airframe still the same uh, and to have that is a really special thing.